David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again, not with a fountain pen review, but with something a little different. I posted my first review back in October of 2015, and a lot has changed since then. This is my 500th video I have posted to YouTube, and I felt it appropriate to do something to celebrate the occasion. I conducted a poll via community post on YouTube with some options of what I could do for a special video, and the majority of folks wanted to see a behind the scenes video about how I create reviews. Uh, I thought about several ways to do this. If I went in depth about everything, this would probably be an hour long video, and I'm not sure if that's what you really want to sit through. So I thought I would break it down a different way and discuss a specific review that I recently created and discuss all of the elements that went into its creation. Uh, in order to tackle this subject, I'm going to be breaking it down into three sections. There is pre-production, which is everything I do prior to actually recording the review, production, which is the actual recording of the review, and post-production, which is everything that takes place after the review is recorded. Uh, in the end, I hope it gives you a better understanding of my process and how I work to produce content for this channel. Uh, the key phrase here is how I work. Uh, other creators might do things differently, and that's cool. Uh, whatever works best for them is perfectly fine. Uh, by no means am I trying to say that what I do is the right way for everyone to create content. It is the right way for me to create content. Each review from beginning to end takes me about four to five hours to create. Some are a bit shorter and others a bit longer. Due to the abundance of unique aspects for this video here, I'm anticipating it'll take a bit longer than normal to create. Okay, let's talk about creating a review. In regard to pre-production, first of all, and most importantly, you need to have a topic. Uh, what will I be reviewing? In the case of a recent video I recorded, it will be a pen. Uh, two pens, actually. And those would be these from Wancher and are called the Stardust, which is one of their more recent releases. Where I get pens to review varies. It is typically one of four different methods. It is either something I have purchased and is part of my personal collection. Um, occasionally, I'll have things on loan from viewers. Uh, it could be something on loan from a retailer, distributor, manufacturer, or creator. Or it's something which has been provided by a retailer, distributor, manufacturer, or creator. In every video, generally right near the beginning, I let you know exactly how the pen being reviewed was obtained. Uh, in many cases, the pens have been sent to me prior to their release so I can prepare a review and have it ready to post the day the pen is available to purchase. In the case of these two pens from Wancher, um, I purchased one of them at full retail price, this Midnight Blue, and then Wancher provided this purple red model at no cost to me so I could show uh, two of the available three models to you during the review. Uh, the third model is a slightly lighter blue. When it comes to working with companies, something I am proud of is that I have worked with 101 different retailers, distributors, manufacturers, and creators. And I'd like to think that each of those would work with me again. Um, I've reached out to begin relationships with some of those folks, and some have reached out to me. Uh, developing those healthy business relationships helped provide content for this channel, which uh, otherwise I wouldn't have access to. I've had companies lend me pens that retail for up to $14,000. Uh, that's not something that I would purchase on my own, but having that access provides what I feel is some interesting content and gives you the chance to check out a wide variety of pen offerings that you might not otherwise get to see up close. Uh, something which irks me every once in a while, um, I, every once in a while I'll receive a comment or an email from someone who contends that if I receive a product at no cost from a company that I must feel bound to provide a positive review. And this gets under my skin a little bit because when someone says that, they're basically accusing me of not having any credibility or professional integrity. Uh, when it comes to creating content and receiving unrequested feedback from others, uh, you need to have a bit of a thick skin. Uh, most of the time, that stuff doesn't get to me, but if someone questions my integrity, then that's something I have a harder time letting go. Uh, when it comes to my reviews, uh, I tend to skew positive, but I'm not afraid to point out negative items about a product as well. It's just that I tend to do so in a positive tone, so you might need to actually listen to the words that I'm saying to understand how I feel about a product. I'm not going to be someone who sits here and rants and raves and shreds a product to pieces. I tend to do my dissection in more of a, a subtle manner. Uh, if you'd care to see her a negative review of a pen, you might want to check out my review of the modern Parker 51. That's about as outwardly negative as you'll see me get in regard to a review. 
Um, I have been working with Wancher for a number of years. Uh, they actually began as a retailer by the name of Ingaika. It's a company which over time has really stepped up their game to provide a wide variety of new and unique offerings. Okay, so I have two pens that need to be reviewed. What comes next? Well, I need to write the review. When I have pens I'm in the process of reviewing, I like to live with them for a while. These two Dudek cubes that you see here behind me typically are filled with the pens, which will be reviewed in the near future. So if you have an eagle eye, you might be able to get a bit of a sneak peek as to what's coming up. I do write out my reviews. More often than not, I'm writing them out by hand. I carry around this Galen Leather A5 notebook holder. Um, inside, there's a little evil eye, which helps ward off any evil spirits, which is useful. But I'll carry this around with me and take notes as I use the pen over a period of time. Now, this is a fairly new notebook, so I only have a couple of pages in here. But I have many A5 notebooks full of reviews and notes. Um, I also work to do a lot of research when it comes to the pens. I am naturally curious. I really like to learn about why things are the way they are. How did it come to be? How did it get its name? Things like that. My favorite piece of information I came across via research involved the Lamy 2000. I was learning about the gentleman who designed the pen. He had previously done some work for the shaving company Braun and designed their iconic shaver. That when you look at it, you realize it looks exactly like a Lamy 2000. Uh, that was something I was proud of because there are countless Lamy 2000 reviews out there. And that was something new and different that, to my knowledge, had never been pointed out. And that's one of my goals when I'm doing research. Uh, to find that cool little nugget of information or make a connection or observation that maybe no one else ever has. Now, that doesn't happen with every review, but it's something I'm always on the lookout for. So uh, what I will call the talking head portion of the review is written. Um, that portion of the review is typically around 13 to 1500 words. Uh, if you are curious, in the case of this video is around 4000 words. Uh, then I need to decide what ink to use for the review. Uh, typically, I've done this before the testing of the pen begins. Uh, these are my ink drawers. The one on the right is completely full of inks, and the one on the left has uh, paper, supplies, audio equipment, and other miscellaneous items. I used to keep my pens in these drawers, but uh, all the pens have been moved out to other storage. I have swatches of every ink in my collection. Uh, I try to pick out a color that matches up well with the pen being reviewed, uh, and then I pick out a couple of other swatches for color comparisons. If a pen is provided to me by a company, I might also try to coordinate the brand of ink. If I'm reviewing a Leonardo pen they provided, I will probably use it as an opportunity to show off one of their inks as well, as opposed to showing an ink from a close competitor. Uh, up next, I need to take some pictures. Typically, I take my pictures in natural light, uh, right there on top of the right-hand cabinet, right next to the window. I do have a light tent, but I don't use it that often. I'll bring it out when needed, but mostly I just use the natural light. For the pictures used during the measurements, I have a Nikon D3300. Uh, I'll admit, it's not the greatest camera. It's on the lower quality end of DLSR cameras, but uh, one of these days I'll need to upgrade. But for now, it gets the job done. And then for close-up and macro shots, I use an iPhone 11 Pro Max fitted with a Sandmark lens. Uh, this allows me to get some decent macro shots. Um, I also have a microscope camera that from time to time I'll hook up with the, one of my computers and use. Um, that can get some very cool ultra close-up pictures of some very small details of a pen. Uh, I typically then edit pictures. I don't do much editing in Photoshop, but uh, you have no idea how hard it is to get a macro shot of a pen without like little specks of dust or hairs or things like that. Uh, sometimes I don't bother, but if it bugs me too much, I might Photoshop some of those things out, but nothing that would ever misrepresent the pen itself. I typically create the thumbnail and intro and measurement portions of the review before I shoot the actual review. Uh, these portions are created in Adobe After Effects. Uh, the intro I have is rather complex. Uh, it, with, it has a couple hundred pictures in it. Uh, the pictures don't change each review, but it takes a long time for the, uh, to render after I create it. Now, it only takes me a couple of minutes to do my part, but then it takes the computer about half an hour to render that 10-second intro. 
I've said this previously in a Q&A, but my intro music was created by my sister. Um, she didn't create it specifically for me. For a period of time, she dabbled in music, and at one point with her partner, she created an album. And my intro is the beginning few seconds of one of their songs by the name of Everything. Uh, here is the intro with a little bit of uh, extra of the song that you've never heard before. I'll be your ball of string or whipping cream on a Sunday. I'll be your parasol, favorite doll in the dark. So the intro has a bit of a personal connection for me. I like that it's not just something generic. Uh, and then my measurement music was created by a gentleman by the name of Dan Picaldi. Okay, on to production. Uh, all of the pre-production has been completed and it's time to record a review. Uh, I am fortunate enough in my home to have a room that I use as an office slash pen cave. Uh, whenever I'm home, more often than not, you will find me here in the office. Uh, what you see behind me is my working desk. I have two computers. I have a setup where I can either have one computer on both monitors or one computer on each monitor. Uh, there's times when you're playing games when it's helpful to have access to a computer which isn't the one you're playing a game on. Uh, sometimes over here you can get a peek at my consoles as well. Uh, while I am mostly a PC gamer, I do have a PS4 and an Xbox One X in order to uh, play games which aren't available on PC. Uh, and then my office TV up there as well. Uh, when it comes to equipment, when I first started shooting my reviews, basically I had none. I had this Sony Handycam uh, CX-160 and that was it. Um, I had to shoot my videos during the day in order to get somewhat acceptable lighting. Um, I used the in-camera mic. Uh, and then I even taped my notes next to the camera. It wasn't the best setup, but it was good enough. And when you're getting started making reviews, good enough is good enough. Uh, no need to spend a bunch of money on expensive equipment right off the bat. Start with what you have and make sure this is something that you like doing before you invest in some upgrades. Uh, when it comes time to shoot a review, I set up my equipment. There are two lights, then a tripod for the camera. I currently use a Panasonic V770 camcorder. Um, I have a mic stand. Uh, in the past, I haven't been that pleased with my audio quality. Uh, this room I'm in has hardwood floors and can be a bit echoey. Uh, I really never felt like audio proofing the entire office or putting down carpet. I wanted the office to look nice even when I wasn't recording. Uh, in the past, I've used a lava mic, um, I've had a Blue Yeti that I used for a while, which is a really good mic. Um, I've been really pleased with my current mic, which is an Audio-Technica AT-87-5R. It's a shotgun condenser microphone, which is right out of view of the camera and has provided a needed bump in audio quality. It's not perfect, uh, but it's good enough. I utilize a Xenix Q1202 mixer, which is plugged into a laptop utilizing Adobe Audition. So I'm recording my audio and video separately and joining everything up during post-production. I have two softbox lights. Lights really aren't that expensive and can really increase the visual quality of your photo. Uh, and then I have my teleprompter. An iPad Pro fits in there. I load up my script and the program I use will advance the text as it goes along. Uh, while there are other reviewers who do a fantastic job of speaking extemporaneously, I want to guarantee that I will say everything that I want to say in the way that I want to say it. If I was just talking off the cuff, inevitably I would forget things or neglect details or potentially misspeak and misrepresent the pen. I want to get my message across as clearly as possible, and for me, I've chosen to utilize this tool. Uh, what you see behind me is very intentional. I have a clock up there which I turn to the side for the sake of continuity. Um, that is so that if for some reason I have to edit out a chunk of footage, you don't suddenly see the clock jump ahead a few minutes. Uh, every so often I forget to turn it around, so if you see it facing forward then you know I forgot to take care of that. Uh, behind my right shoulder, I typically have those Dudek cubes I mentioned previously with the pens will be reviewed coming up soon. Uh, sometimes I might have a box or two over there. Um, at times, that's been a bit of a teaser regarding an upcoming review as well. 
The pictures and drawings and magnets you see over my left shoulder have all been sent from viewers. If you would care to see your artwork featured here, feel free to send it along to my P.O. box, which can be found in the notes below every video. Uh, then over here we have the cubes. Uh, I get asked a lot about the cubes. I do like cubes. I've been solving them for uh, too many years to mention. Uh, my best time is 48.6 seconds, which in the grand scheme of cubing is not that great. Um, I'd love to one day get that time down to sub 30 seconds, but that'll take a lot of work. Uh, just to mix things up visually, I do change around the cubes. Uh, most of the time, the design doesn't mean anything, but I have been known to arrange them like the flag of the country of origin of the pen I'm reviewing, or maybe have the cubes represent the pen I'm reviewing itself. If I happen to be recording more than one video at a time, I will uh, change the cubes around and change my golf shirt so it doesn't uh, at least appear like I shot them on the same day. The golf shirts I wear all are all from courses that I've been fortunate enough to play, uh, except for a couple I have from Augusta National. I was fortunate enough to attend the Masters one year, but I haven't had the opportunity to play the course. Uh, in fountain pens, we often talk about Holy Grail pens. Well, playing Augusta National would be my Holy Grail golf course. Uh, it is a very special place and a very special course. Sometimes when I record a review, everything goes smoothly and I do everything in one take. And then there are other times when my mouth isn't quite working and it takes me more than one take. I've previously... <coughs> streets, who are the owners and distributors of the Estwick lines of pens. Uh, the pen... Uh, but this will be the first time... SD Scarlet Oversize. I'm going to talk what... I've previously reviewed a couple of different versions of the S and that would be the SD Scarlet Oversize. Uh, what I have previewed... Uh, they say it harkens back to the old glamour and the silver star screen starlets who set... The rate of the spring on this pen could use uh, to be a... Uh, this about right here, this point is aware about a third of an inch from uh, where the cap. Uh, I mentioned it previously, but I owned this. Just to be clear, I put those beeps in there to signify the transition between the clips. That wasn't me cursing after each mistake, though that does happen from time to time. After the main portion of the review, I head on over to what I affectionately call camera two. Uh, during some reviews, when I say to join me over here at Camera 2, it's a bit of a reference to the uh, old John Stewart Daily Show. He used to do a bit where he would uh, say, meet him over at Camera 3. Um, I thought if I called this Camera 3, it would overly confuse folks, so uh, it's Camera 2. Spoiler alert, it's the same camera, it's just a new setup. One of the keys to shooting the writing sample is to basically record it upside down, having the camera pointed straight down. Uh, the tripod is leaning forward and being weighted down by a sandbag. Uh, this way, the tripod is out of the way, and then I just rotate the image in post-production. Um, I'm doing my writing samples on a little side desk I really enjoy. I purchased this from a shop called Tukia Craft in Japan. Uh, it's a cool little desk with wheels and drawers that slide out. It's where I keep a lot of my correspondence supplies. If you should ever write me a letter, what I send back to you comes out of this desk right here. When I'm doing my writing samples, um, I don't use the prompter. Um, I'm not having to remember many facts and figures and additional information at this point, so it's a bit easier to speak extemporaneously. Okay, this leads to post-production. At this point, I've created all of the pieces for the review, and all that's left is to put them all together. Um, I keep them organized in a file for that specific review. Uh, I utilize Adobe Premiere Pro to edit. This can be rather time consuming. To edit a 12 minute review can take an hour and a half to two hours. It really depends. Uh, this video here will at least take a couple hours to edit with all the additional pictures and edits and video that's being inserted. Uh, this can be rather time consuming. Uh, after a while, you do get a little sick of looking at your own face and hearing your own voice. Um, also by this time, a little sick of uh, also hearing the content as well. I wrote it and then I said it and now I'm having to listen to it over and over again during the editing process. Uh, you know, I'm picking apart all the little fumbles and mistakes that I made. Uh, 
In regard to Premiere Pro, I realize that I'm only scratching the surface in regards to what it brings to the table, but it all boils down to time. Uh, it takes time to learn a new effect or incorporate a new production element. And I need to weigh that time against the increase in production quality I feel it brings and uh, the look and feel uh, that it brings to the videos. While there is always room for improvement, um, in general, I'm pleased with the overall look and feel of what I am producing at least twice a week. Uh, after the review is completed, it needs to get rendered in order to create the file that gets uploaded to YouTube. Uh, once it is uploaded to YouTube, uh, first I make the video available to my Patreon supporters. It can vary, but I try to give them access a day before I post it live for everyone else. I greatly appreciate the support of folks who choose to do so via Patreon. If you would care to receive early access to reviews as well as some other perks, then there is a link in the notes below where you can learn more about it. Um, after a video has been posted, then another aspect is that I monitor the comments. Um, I try to reply to a fair number of comments. Uh, if someone has a question, I try to be responsive. Um, there are rarely any issues, but I want to make sure that everything stays civil and that the comment section in my videos is a welcoming and friendly place. Uh, very rarely do I ever need to remove comments. I never remove a comment because someone uh, expressed an opinion different than my own. It is okay to have a different opinion. It's all about how you express that opinion and if they do so in a civil manner that adds to the overall conversation. The vast majority of folks who watch and comment on these reviews do a really great job of expressing themselves in what I'll call uh, an adult manner, and I appreciate that. I like to think that the comment section is a bit of a mirror as to what I'm projecting out to you. If I project positivity and professionalism, then I'm more likely to receive that same courtesy in return. Once the video is posted, it is fun to see the immediate views. I appreciate you early birds. And after the video is posted, then I get to turn around and do everything all over again. And I've done that twice a week for the last six and a half years. Well, for the first couple of years, I only did one review a week, but I've been doing two a week for a while now. Okay, that was a lot of information, but that's a little bit of what goes into the creation of each of these reviews. I hope that you enjoyed getting a bit of a sneak peek behind the curtain. Uh, creating these reviews is something I enjoy doing. I've said it many times, but doing these videos for me is just an extension of the fountain pen hobby. It really gives me an opportunity to enjoy the hobby and in the end produce content that I hope uh, is uh, high quality and informational and entertaining for you. Um, I greatly appreciate this time that you take out of your day to watch these videos. Uh, it's amazing to think that I've done this 500 times, but I look forward to going through the creation process 500 more times and hopefully many more than that. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.